Well, isn't it? It depends. Here is the wall outlet sine wave. What do you think its amplitude is? Let's find out with a simple experiment. We'll connect an oscilloscope to the outlet and check it on the graph. For safety, we will assemble a simple divider with three resistors. Their values will be 100K, 22K and 100K. The voltage across the 22K resistor should be approximately 10 times lower than the input voltage. Three resistors are needed to obtain a relative decoupling of the output from the input, that is to ensure the safety of the experiment. If it turns out that the common wire in the oscilloscope breaks through to the face line, nothing terrible will happen since the voltage will simply drop across the resistor. Ideally, we should have used 99K as R1 and R3, but I don't have such parts at hand. This is where the case from an old mobile phone charger comes in handy. The divider is ready. Let's measure the voltage first using a multimeter. OK, outlet voltage is 230 volts. And what do we get at the output of the divider? It's 23 volts sharp. We have built an almost perfect voltage divider by 10. So here comes the moment of truth. Let's connect the divider output to an oscilloscope. So here's our sinusoid. The scale is graded with value of bond division equal to 10 volts. And now let's count voltage from zero to the peak. What do we see? 32. That means the real sinusoid amplitude is not 230, but 320 volts. Why? How we've been deceived all this time? Of course not. 230 volts is the so-called RMS value, which stands for root mean square. But the amplitude value of the sinusoid is what we're now observing on the oscilloscope, that is from zero to peak, is 320 volts. But why all this confusion? Why not indicate the real, that is, amplitude value? The reason is the amount of energy that a sinusoidal alternating current source can deliver to the load. It is less than when powering the load with direct current of the same voltage, since AC turns on and off, while DC powers the load continuously.